Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Tonight Show, everybody. Well, everybody's talking about this. Last night was the 93rd Annual Academy Awards. Yep. Perfect uh, reaction. Nope. The audience seemed to enjoy it there, but people online had a complaint or two. No host, no jokes, no bits. The set, lack of clips from nominated movies and performances. Category introductions too long. Acceptance speeches too long. In memoriam way too fast. Best picture category not at the end. Anthony Hopkins won best actor. Anthony Hopkins wasn't there. Show had a weird ending. Show way too long. All right, look, I guess most... I guess most people thought the show was a little sluggish and at times a bit uncomfortable. It was as if the whole ceremony had just gotten a second Pfizer shot. But the Oscars were really different for starters. The show was held at a train station in Los Angeles. Because if there's one thing you think of when you think of L.A., it's trains. Uh, <laughs> is there a train station in L.A.? There still is. I don't think there is. I mean, out of, out of any place in L.A., you could have done it at the Hollywood Bowl, Santa Monica Pier, Hollywood Walk of Fame, La Brea Tar Pits. I don't care what you're doing. A bus station makes more sense than a train station. Dodger Stadium. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, I guess the train station made sense because uh, I fell asleep uh, 30 minutes in when I woke up. I had no idea where it was. <laughs> you... Come on! Uh, no, I, 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 I... You knew it was going to be an awkward night when a train conductor yelled, Next stop, the in memoriam. <laughs> a lot of people were also talking about the set. Can we see it? Oh. <laughs> it was held at a local catering hall. <laughs> I was expecting the announcer to be like, put your hands together for the bar mitzvah boy, Josh. <laughs> it's the kind of place you hold the insurance salesman of the year award. It's not the Oscar. <laughs> the ceremony was watched by a record low 9.9 .9 million people. Yeah, 9.9 .9 million. That's like taking everyone who watched Mank and adding 9.8 million. <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you saw Mank. There you go. All right, there we are. Dude, it was, yeah. Uh, I was, I was, actually, it was a historic night for the first time. A woman of color won Best Director. <laughs> and the first Korean woman won Best Supporting Actress. That was, that was it. I, 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 I do love that. I read a headline today that kind of confused me. It said, free dessert on a stick at White Castle for people who have had COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> Which brings us to a segment we like to call, uh, I Have Some Questions. Uh, first up, does White Castle usually sell dessert on a stick? Actually, hold on. Does White Castle usually sell dessert? If so, does it always come on a stick? Wait, back up. What even is dessert on a stick? Follow up, if you're the kind of person who only gets the vaccine because you want dessert on a stick from White Castle, who are you? Are you okay? And do you need help? I just have so many questions. Just have so many questions. Hey, get this, according to several new polls, President Biden has an approval rating of about 54% as he approaches his 100th day in office. Biden was like, wow, so many people to thank. First, my parents, my mom met my dad, they had sex. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to this, I saw that due to the pandemic, there's now a nationwide chicken wing shortage. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. In a related story, Joe Biden's approval rating just dropped to 3%. <laughs> Get this fixed. It's not gonna be pretty when a bunch of guys in a sports bar serve the platter of buffalo cauliflower, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't worry, people are taking it in stride until the wings come back. Americans are just dipping their fists directly into the blue cheese dressing. <laughs> it's, a big, it's, a big, it's a big drumstick. Yeah. And finally, this is odd. In Indiana, two people broke into a Denny's, but it wasn't a typical burglary. Watch this. Two burglars were filmed trespassing at a Denny's in Indiana this week. They weren't after cash, though. They were after the eggs. Police say the intruders went straight to the kitchen and made themselves some eggs. They left, and then they came back later the same night for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yep, even after hours, it takes Denny's two tries to get your eggs right. <laughs> of course, if the burglars are caught, they'll be thrown in the grand slammer.
And today, the CDC made a huge announcement about wearing masks. Watch this. The CDC now says that vaccinated Americans generally do not need to wear masks outside, as long as they're not in a large gathering. When people heard that, people in the street started flashing their mouths like it was Mardi Gras. Like, woo! I gotta be honest, I'm gonna miss wearing a mask. Uh, the adult acne made me feel young, you know? <laughs> on the bright side, now we can finally stop weirdly opening our eyes to greet people on the street. Like... <laughs> That's right, the CDC updated its guidance on outdoor masking for both vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And they even released this helpful chart. Take a look at this. Yeah, I. I, I like to think the sketch artist at the CDC is like, I'll tell you again, I can do hair, ears, eyes, and mouth. I just don't do noses. I just don't... It's just not my thing. I mean, the two most important things about a... I'll do it for cheap. I'll do it for cheap. I just don't do it. The chart ranks activities from safest to less safe to least safe. It's the same chart people use when deciding between Delta United and Spirit Airlines. <laughs> well, it's a big week for President Biden. Tomorrow he delivers his first joint address to Congress. Yep, everyone's looking forward to hearing Biden speak. Then at the last minute, they're going to call on Anthony Hopkins instead. <laughs> it's always interesting to watch a presidential address. Uh, half the crowd cheers, half the crowd sits in silence. It's like a throwback to Harry and Meghan's wedding, don't you think? <laughs> Yeah, Biden's address will be on all the major networks. Of course, on Telemundo, Biden will be dubbed in Spanish. And on Fox News, he'll be dubbed by a demon. I promise you, we'll come out stronger with a renewed faith in ourselves. Some tech news. After a long wait, Apple rolled out a new privacy feature that requires apps like Facebook to ask permission before tracking the activity on your iPhone. Yeah. So now you can relax at home in total privacy. Yes, total privacy. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, after years of infringing on our privacy, Apple is like, we're against collecting your data starting now. <laughs> Apple also uh, introduced new emojis, including face exhaling and face in clouds. Take a look. Even the eggplant emoji is like, come on, we all know what this is supposed to be. This is... You gonna play this game? You gonna play this game? Okay. I saw that Guinness just debuted a new beer with nitro cold brew coffee in it. Ooh. Check it out. Yeah. It's the perfect gift for the sluggish drunk in your life. <laughs> it's a great product if you want your heart to feel like it's napping and skydiving at the same time. <laughs> Should be fun walking around the office with a can of that, like, 9 a.m., time for another pick-me-up. <laughs> That's right, Guinness and coffee. Irish people call that baby formula. <laughs> and another unlikely pairing, Goldfish has teamed up with Frank's Red Hot for new limited-edition spicy crackers. Here's a photo. Ooh. And normally I make a joke about these kind of food mashups, but I'm gonna level with you. This one sounds spectacular. <laughs> Yeah. When it, right? When it comes to recent innovations, I put the COVID vaccine at one, this at 1A. <laughs> to some, it sounds weird, but it's still better than Gerber Sriracha. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Welcome back to yeah. Welcome back the baby hot ones. Yeah. <laughs> hey, some good news for Dunkin' Donuts fans. They just announced they're adding coconut milk to the menu. Yep, they'll keep it on the table between the cream and the ashtray. <laughs> and if you order it legally, they're allowed to make fun of you. I got a large iced coffee for Prince Brandon, who's too good for cows. That's Brandon, B is in biatch. <laughs> and finally, some news from overseas. I read that next month, a high-end apartment complex in London is opening up a see-through pool that sits 115 feet high. Look at this thing. Ooh. 
It's perfect, because when I think sunny rooftop pools, I think London. <laughs> you know someone's last words are going to be, Cannonball! <laughs> well, guys, earlier tonight, President Biden delivered his first joint address to Congress on the eve of his 100th day in office. Last time someone in their 70s got that much applause, they were doing debut. <laughs> That's right, the Capitol took center stage tonight, and I gotta be honest, it was nice to see someone behind the podium who wasn't wearing deer antlers and a pelt. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun night for Democrats. On the other hand, Republicans didn't seem too thrilled. They looked like they just heard their best hope in 2024 is Randy Quaid. <laughs> of course, Vice President Kamala Harris sat behind Biden. She had a spray bottle just in case he started drifting off topics. Like, <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe. No, Joe, no, stop. Let's get on with it. Come on, back to focus. Due to COVID, this was not a typical joint address. For instance, all the lawmakers were seated far apart for social distancing, which was too bad because they couldn't do the usual congressional kiss cam. <laughs> That's right, during his address, Biden unveiled his $1.8 trillion American Families Plan. At first, people thought he said American Family Plan, like we're all going to hop on the same Verizon account. It's like, <laughs> It's a genius idea. We all share the same bill. 300 million people. A big part of the plan includes free universal preschool. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty good. It's pretty good considering sending your kid to preschool now is just handing them an iPad. Now, this was big earlier today. Federal investigators raided Rudy Giuliani's Manhattan apartment and office because of his dealings in Ukraine. When the agents walked in, Rudy got so nervous, he started sweating hair dye and tucking all the evidence down his pants. <laughs> My wife... <laughs> Rudy was like, why? I have nothing to hide except for everything past this door. <laughs> yeah, Rudy panicked and called his lawyer. Then when his own phone started ringing, he panicked even more. Like, no! <laughs> well, guys, a lot of people have road trips planned this summer, but I just saw that gas stations all over the country could run out of gas in the coming months. It's going to be a tough summer, especially because gasoline is the main ingredient in White Claw Surge. <laughs> One area. <laughs> now you know. That's it, yeah. Wow. The people waiting online for yeah. The Tonight Show, everyone gets a White Claw Surge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rowdy area. That... <laughs> My God. Meanwhile, toy maker Hasbro just said that it would raise the prices of its games and toys as the cost of raw materials increases. Yeah, now they're just selling boxes that say toy not included. <laughs> Some more business news. Chipotle is giving away 250,000 burritos to nurses and healthcare workers in honor of National <laughs> Nurses Day. Not only is that great news for healthcare workers, but I think we also just solved the gas shortage. I saw that uh, Rotten Tomatoes now ranks Paddington 2 ahead of Citizen Kane as the best-reviewed film of all time. The White Claw people love Paddington 2. <laughs> yeah, Paddington 2 is a, it's a great movie, but it's pretty surprising that the number one slot isn't one of Paddington's more dramatic movies. I mean, just this year, he was in No Pants Land. The year before that, he was in Barasite. <laughs> That's it, Tariq. Just keep fake laughing. It's almost the weekend. There's also uh, Marmy by Your Laid. <laughs> Man, I was at the Oscars on Sunday. I should have stayed my ass in LA. And of course, who could forget classics like The Coat Book? <laughs> Holy <laughs> This is great! <laughs> Helen, you've changed the late night game once again. <laughs> and of course, Brave Hat. How <laughs> oh <my God>. oh <laughs> you guys enjoy that? Oh, oh my God. That's it. <laughs> oh, brave Hat. Some, uh, some more entertainment news after the success of Godzilla vs. Kong. They're already thinking about the next movie, which could be called Son of Kong. Ooh. Mm. Yep. It starts with King Kong going, you're my son? Damn, that clinic said that you'd never be able to find me. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yeah, it's about a giant ape who doesn't want to go into his family's lizard punching business. <laughs> I'm different than you, Dad. <laughs> And this is fun. They're also planning a movie that takes place before Son of Khan called How I Met Your Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> well, guys, it's now been over a year since we all got on Zoom, and yet some people are still getting the hang of it, even people on the news. So you know what that means. It's time for another installment of Greatest Moments in Zoom History. Enjoy. <laughs> As soon as the congresswoman said viral, she froze. I now call upon the Prime Minister of the Republic of India, His Excellency Narendra Modi. Your Excellency, President Biden, <laughs> colleagues, my fellow citizens. Well, I guess we could, you know, good old college try, I suppose. the White House. What's the mood like among the crowd there? Uh, at this point, we've all heard some crazy conspiracy theories about the vaccine. Uh, but check out how a doctor reacted yesterday when a Republican lawmaker was pressing him on one of the theories. Is there any intention of tracking folks? Nope. We heard about an injection of a tracking device. Is, is, is that being done anywhere <laughs> in Orange County? I'm sorry, I just have to compose myself. <laughs> There's not a vaccine with a tracking device embedded in it that I know of exists in the world, period. The lawmaker was then like, okay, so maybe I won't ask my next question about the vaccine turning us into wolf people. <laughs> he could have saved himself some embarrassment if he had just looked up the answer on the tracking device in his pocket. <laughs> the phone is tracking you, buddy. <laughs> my Fitbit says I did 10,000. Yeah, it knows exactly where you stepped. <laughs> I heard about a mix-up at a vaccination site that put one California woman in a pe peculiar situation, but she doesn't seem to uh, be too worried about it. Listen to this. 89 years of life, Joanne Lawton's learned one very important lesson. What good would it do to be afraid of anything? Even after she got her COVID-19 vaccine, the first dose from Pfizer and the second from Moderna. How do you feel that you have two separate I feel no different, and I don't give a darn. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That Republican lawmaker was like, geez, now you have two tracking devices in you. <laughs> and finally, a man in Oklahoma got into a bit of an accident while trying to park. Watch this. A car caught on camera after smashing into an Oklahoma middle school. Police posting this picture of the damage and the debris to social media. They say a man was trying to park his Mercedes. Well, he accidentally put the SUV into drive instead of reverse and slammed right through the school's wall. Luckily, no one was hurt. He tried to play it off by hopping out of the car like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah! Last night was President Biden's first address to Congress, and over 12 million people tuned in to watch. Yep, as soon as the Academy heard, Biden was immediately asked to host next year's Oscar. <laughs> and get this, 85% of people who watched Biden's speech approved of it. That's amazing. The only other things Americans like that much are Dolly Parton and cheese fries. <laughs> of course, because of COVID, the crowd was pretty spread out. Normally, 1,600 people attend, but only 200 could be there. So here's, here's what the room looked like. Uh, <laughs> Biden looks like he's up there calling a game of bingo. Uh, <laughs> that's got to be a tough gig for the president, though. Right before Biden walked out, a staffer was like, um, sir, the house is only 12% full, and half of the crowd hates you. Go get him. Go get him, buddy. Go. That's right, yeah. Nobody in that chamber was working harder than Biden, except for Chuck Schumer's ears. You see? <laughs> Ouch! 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 Entire speech that year was thinking, wrap it up, Joe, wrap it up, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> Straight 
distress ear. <laughs> this was cool. Before he started his speech, Biden pointed out that history was being made. Check it out. Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President, No president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time. Yeah. That's cool. That's better than last year when Trump thanked Madam Speaker and Madam Tussaud. <laughs> but this is a big week for Biden because today is his 100th day in office. Yeah. It makes sense that presidents are judged after 100 days, around three months into any relationship, is when you think, this is great, or how do I get out of this? <laughs> if I can't do it, then, then, it's, then it's the holidays, and then it's Valentine's Day, and then March earliest? Oh. Some sports news. Uh, everybody is talking about this right now. The NFL draft kicked off tonight. <laughs> right. The NFL said since Commissioner Roger Goodell is fully vaccinated, he could hug the players. I guess that was fun. It was the soft kiss in the forehead that was a little weird. <laughs> At this is exciting this morning, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio made a big announcement. Take a look at this. Our plan is to fully reopen New York City on July 1st. We are Ooh. ready for stores here, here. to open, for businesses to open, offices, theaters, full strength. Yeah. Whoa. On July 1st, even your grandma's gonna be like, I'm off to the club. <laughs> yeah, most people were thrilled, while New Yorkers who love working from home were like, friggin' de Blasio. <laughs> Some more news for New Yorkers. I saw that after three years of construction, Legoland New York is finally opening this summer. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, today some jerk older brother kicked over all the rides. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for the park to open, actually. There's an extra thrill when you realize that you're on a roller coaster made of Legos. <laughs> Listen to this. Researchers at Dartmouth University found that gossip can actually be good for you. Mm. The study was conducted by Professor Ira Kirsch, who I'm pretty sure had some work done. <laughs> and finally, a shopper in the UK got a surprise when they returned home with a plant from Ikea and found a gecko lizard inside. How annoyed is that gecko? Huh? It had the run of the entire Ikea, now it lives in a one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Even weirder, the other plant had flow from progressive living. <laughs> this is very exciting. Tomorrow on NBC is the 147th Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yep, the big race will feature a bunch of three-year-olds running around while people just watch and get drunk. <laughs> it's like the sports version of Zoom Kindergarten. <laughs> The current derby favorite is Essential Quality. Yeah, but there's an interesting horse named Soup and Sandwich <laughs> that's owned by the heiress to Campbell's Soup. Ooh. And it's rumored that if the horse loses, he'll be... <laughs> fed some hay and say, let's get him next year. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, in South Carolina, former Vice President Mike Pence gave his first speech since leaving the White House. And a lot of people think it was the start of his campaign for 2024. <laughs> Pence actually has a great chance to unite the country, because both Biden and Trump voters can't stand him. Oh. <laughs> I, see, already, wow. it's been a Took a while. Took a while. Yeah. Took but a while. Listen, this is this. This is very interesting. I heard that during Pence's speech, only 55 people watched on Facebook Live. Oh. 55, not million, <laughs> or 55,000. Oh. 55 people. <laughs> He's the only person whose virtual events have a 10% capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Some news from overseas today. Russia announced that they produced the world's first COVID vaccine for animals which means pretty soon we'll have to deal with animals posting their vaccination cards on social media. <laughs> when the news broke, Russian scientists were like, relax, relax, we test on people first. <laughs> I'm sure Russia's animal vaccine is safe. They actually gave it to one of the horses in the Kentucky Derby. Oh. It's the number six horse, Borscht or Sandwich. Oh. <laughs> do it.
Yeah. You gotta do uh, it. <laughs> Borscht or sandwich. Uh, <laughs> Borscht or sandwich. <laughs> yeah. uh, get this, I saw that Pope Francis just issued a law that says Vatican employees can accept any work-related gifts more than $49. When asked why he issued the law, Pope Francis said, because it's funny. <laughs> The news really stung Vatican employees, especially when the Pope left the room on a hoverboard. <laughs> uh, that's right, no more gifts over $49. And now that the church has settled that issue, there are officially no more scandals. <laughs> Some business news, I saw that Lay's is releasing new potato chips that are dusted with Cool Ranch Doritos flavoring. They've even got a great name for them. Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> wow. And finally, I saw that a man in the Philippines holds an interesting world record. Watch this. This guy in the Philippines, Percival Lugi, started collecting toys that came in fast food meals when he was five. 50 years later, he's got about 20,000 of them. It's like he's living inside the world's biggest claw machine. Meanwhile, that guy's family hasn't had a happy meal in 50 years. <laughs>